All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass on this uh, 95 degree July day. And we're out here uh, doing some conditioning and some environmental socialization with some uh, older dogs. But Julep, uh, she managed to kind of weasel her way into this session. And how that came about is kind of a funny story. There was a lady out here this morning, and uh, she knows a lot about golden doodles. And she was telling us uh, that what you call this golden doodle coat is a party coat. See how it's over half white and uh, one solid color otherwise, right? Okay, so that's what they call a party coat, I guess. Now, that just got, just got stuck in my head. And after that lady left, my daughter, who's generally dragging this dog around up to the house with her and stuff, she was out riding her bike, and she was like, Dad, I'm going to the house. Well, as, as, as she went to go up the hill towards the house, <laughs> this dog looked at me. And I swear, like what she was saying was, Hey, Stoney, you see this party coat? <laughs> I like to party. And if you guys are going to party, I want to tag along. <laughs> you know, like when you're in high school and your little sister or little brother wants to go to a party, like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. Now, as we got out here, <laughs> uh, show them all this grass. So what we're doing, guys, is we're out here and we're walking around in this grass and we're throwing dummies out in this grass. And we're trying to accomplish a few different goals. We're trying to... Uh, we're trying to acclimate the young dogs to uh, these different, uh, uh, you know, type of in, in environmental circumstances. We're trying to condition them to the heat, and uh, we're trying to teach them about, like, how you got to persevere in the face of a little bit of adversity. Because it's hard. Like, when you're just a little dog, like, it's hard to come down through here and make your way through all these bushes and stuff. And for the first couple of minutes... <laughs> julep was bounding around and she made about six or eight feet of progress <laughs> and then she just looked at me like okay stony i've had enough partying and so she ended up riding the four-wheeler <laughs> but we're going to put her down and let her get back to doing some exploring <laughs> you probably won't be able to see her so i'm just going to walk around and see if she'll follow me come on julep make your way through here we make these golden doodles tough out here but anyway, so we were talking, she came out here, and then I thought, well, you know, I'll just talk about golden doodles. Like, I've been making some videos here lately where I kind of talk about, you know, make a, you know, whether you want a Malinois or not, or maybe uh, the difference between different kinds of Labradors. Now, this is just from my perspective, guys. I'm not trying to claim to be the end-all expert uh, on these dogs, because I'm not. I have a good general understanding of what it's like to live with and train a lot of different kinds of dogs, because I live with and I train a whole lot of different kinds of dogs. You know, so for this one golden doodle, you know, I'll probably see these this month, this month. And they'll be different sizes, different coat colors. Some of them will be poodle golden retriever crosses, which is like what they call an F1. Some of them will be an F1B, which is like a, a, a golden doodle poodle cross and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. And you can learn all those different, uh, all that terminology if you just go to the um, Golden Doodle um, Association of America website. I think it's goldendoodleassociation.org or something. But they can give you all the basic details, you know, about how the about the specifics of the dogs. But I can give you a general idea, you know, a general idea of what I think about them. Most of the time, when we see about guys, when we see people buying these dogs, uh, we see them buying them for two reasons, you know. Number one, uh, like they don't shed very much. Right? But remember, this stuff's on a continuum. So the, you know, people will say, well, these dogs don't shed very much or they're hypoallergenic. And hypoallergenic, guys, is not the same thing as non-allergenic. Hypoallergenic just means that if you have a mild allergy to something, like maybe the dog or, or whatever it is won't meet that threshold. So you might have a mild allergy uh, to uh, something that relates to a dog. You know, and if you have this type of dog, uh, it doesn't meet that threshold. Whereas if you have... Come here, buddy. If you have a black lab, got this double coat, it's real oily, he sheds all the time. This dog right here might make your allergies go crazy. Okay, and so that's the difference. Oh, probably it's not gonna aggravate your allergies too much. Come here, buddy. If you have any kind of allergy at all, it's gonna make them go crazy. So that's the basic difference. So don't think that the dogs are non-allergenic, they're just hypoallergenic. And don't think that they don't shed. They just don't shed a whole lot, right? So that's the first thing. That's why people get them. So, like, what are they like to live with? Uh, they're pretty easy to live with. We come out here, and when I get them, only thing I have to watch out for is sometimes they can be a little hard to house break, and uh, sometimes uh, they can be a little barky, right? And that kind of comes from the poodle in them. But the good things about them is they're very pattern cognizant, and uh, so they learn things very quickly. They got a moderate to high energy level. 
uh, and a moderate to high endurance level and a relatively low recharge rate. So in other words, you can go out and do stuff with them and they can do you know, activities, outdoor activities for a fair amount of time. But then if you do something in the morning, you probably don't have to do a whole lot till late in the afternoon. Whereas a dog like, uh, no name, this dog here, you do something in the morning, you gotta do something in the midday and you gotta do something before bed. And all those things have to be relatively physically demanding. Uh, so when we're fooling with these little golden doodles, we take them out and take them on a little adventure. And so we're out walking around and uh, having a good time with the golden doodle. And again, these dogs, they, you know, I guess they kind of originated in the 90s, started getting big in the late 90s, and now they're just a staple. We see probably, uh, come here, little julep. We see probably, uh, I don't know, how many did we do last month? Like 10? Yeah, so, you know, we'll see anywhere from 5 to 10 uh, on the high side, maybe a little bit more uh, every month. And I guess, uh, I can't remember the last time we had one that was particularly hard to fool with. Oh, Now, what we normally get with them, as far as people thinking that they're hard to fool with, is like I said, they got two consistently kind of aggravating tendencies. And one is they're hard to housebreak. And they're not really hard to housebreak for us, you know, because we keep such a tight schedule. But they're hard to housebreak for normal people as compared to, say, a lab. And they're big barkers. This little dog here, when she gets frustrated and starts barking, uh, there's no ignoring her, right? And so that's kind of about all they do wrong is they uh, bark a little too much and uh, they uh, kind of hard to housebreak. And then, to be honest with you, they like people so much that uh, they can be a little needy. You know, so like you try to go to the potty, they want to go with you. You know, you're going to go to the dry cleaners, they think they should go with you. Okay, so I'm going to get up here. Oh, and we're just going to kind of test out, you know, how this dog uh, does with stuff. Now look, I see where uh, Eli stacked up all this firewood here. Like, uh, we'll get up here and uh, this kind of can demonstrate to you that uh, this little dog is sure-footed and confident and outgoing. Now, the great thing, I'm telling you, the great thing about having a dog that has a relatively high uh, energy output level and relatively high endurance is you can get off of work and you can go knock out an hour of exercise and you want a dog that can keep up with you, right? But most people, when they get off work, they do one hour exercise after work. Uh, you know, let's be honest, they don't have another hour of exercise before bed. Right, and so what I like about this little dog here, well, hello, Larry, what are you doing? What I like about this little dog here and dogs like this is they can come out here and they can do an adventure with me, okay? But they don't have to do so many adventures every day. They're pretty chill. Like if we come out and we hit a big adventure today, we can probably get by with not doing a big adventure tomorrow. You know, so I'm gonna walk around on this brush. Good. Now these are just advanced proprioception drills, guys. Now, one of the things I want you to watch about her, <laughs> come here, little Tweety is see how easily like she tracks and she picks her way through this you know that's one of those poodle qualities poodles believe it or not are very sure-footed dogs and what i mean by sure-footed is all of this stuff let me pick her up for a second all of this stuff moves around okay and so like you'll notice there's a silver lab here if larry jumps up on here what he's going to do is he's going to knock every log around it's going to be kind of spastic right but watch this little dog i can just place her just about anywhere i'm gonna place her up here like a goat you know, and watch her. She's going to be able to pick her way along this line and she's going to be able to figure out. She's got very good, very, she has a very natural tendency to be able to figure out how to pick a line as it relates to, uh, you know, having secure footing. And that's part uh, a matter of being able to conceptualize what's going on, but it's also just a part of uh, having a good natural sense of proprioception or what uh, you know, we talk about in terms of body awareness, you know, mind-body synergy. But look at this. All this stuff, it's really shaky. Look how confident she is, outgoing. Good. Now, I put her in a tough spot here. I'm going to see if I can get her to come over here to this log. Let's we'll see if she can figure out how to get over to this log. Come on, find a way. Look at that. Confident, outgoing, and she's having to figure out. So she's putting her paws up on those sticks, and she's really having to think about how much each of these sticks, how much weight can they bear. Good. And this is some stuff that bigger dogs, especially big hard-charging dogs, they never understand without a lot of personal instruction. Watch her. I'm going to end up getting her all the way out on this log. Ain't that crazy? Now see if I can get her to turn around on that log. Perfect. Now look at that great balance that she has. Now I'm going to pick her up and show you just how unstable that log is. 
you see it could just you know roll right away i can set her down right there and this is what i mean about puppy sized adventures i just had somebody that was commenting on my channel about living in uh, new york city or chicago or another one of those big cities and they were like stoney i just don't know where i can find you know a puppy sized adventure guys puppy sized adventures are everywhere you know look at larry larry's decided he's going to come up here now having larry up here <laughs> now uncle stoney's going to have to watch out because uh, i've already <laughs> tore both my acls and larry might be looking to help me tear something else right so i'm gonna have to bend down here and kind of squat as i'm walking with these dogs but look at that look how confident now watch larry as he kind of knocks around everything's kind of hectic with them and he's making good progress but larry has already been out here on this pile quite a few times go that way larry this is julep's first time and look she's already more sure-footed so when you get these little dogs guys don't be afraid to take them out and have some adventure time with them they're you know they're they're adventurous dogs they're big time big time explorers if you'll let them be good very nice and that's another one of the problems that you run into with these little dogs is like sometimes people get them and they look like little dolls and since they look like little dolls then people like don't let them be dogs you know and that's what we need to do is we need to let them go out and be a dog so that they can kind of get that out of their system very nice oh you're perfect look, look at that though Ain't that crazy? Let's see if we can get her back up on this little log right here. Come on, Julep. Oh, find your way up here. See if she can pick her a line all the way up here. I might help her some, but look, not too much. We'll get this stick out of her way. Good. And we've got us another, another one of these limbs up here that she's going to have to balance on. Oh, look. There we go. Look. Perfect. Perfect. It's a perfect dog. Now, not only are we out here doing an awesome puppy size adventure, look how happy her face looks. You know, see. Can you see how happy she looks, Eli? Look. She's so happy. She's proud of herself, guys. She's out here doing what the big dogs are doing. But the neat thing is, is when we go back to the kennel, let's go down this way. When we go back down to the kennel, uh, more than likely what's actually going to happen is my daughter is going to come get this dog and take her up to her room and dress her up and <laughs> put her in a dollhouse. But anyway, so when she goes back up to my house and hangs out in my daughter's dollhouse, she's going to go to sleep. And it is 1.52 in the afternoon. She's going to sleep super solid, probably till about 6 o'clock. Then she's going to get up. She's going to go out. She's going to potty. She's going to make her way back down to the kennel. We'll work on some formal obedience exercises. Uh, and then we'll put her to bed about uh, 10 o'clock, and she'll sleep till probably 6.30 or 7, you know? So these little dogs, they, people think they're hard to housebreak. Most of the time, they think they're hard to housebreak because they're not taking them out and letting them engage in enough uh, physically and mentally demanding activity to satisfy uh, you know their energy requirement needs and you always remember that hygiene and energy expenditure are directly tied together right so dogs and they will eliminate in anticipation of exercise so when we bring her out and she thinks we're gonna go come do a big adventure she makes sure to uh, completely eliminate right and so it kind of kills two birds with one stone so these guys are awesome um, I don't know what else I could say about them other than just remember that basically the difference is not that this kind of dog is uh, non-allergenic oh because they are i mean you know if you're allergic to dogs you have a severe allergy then hey listen you know this dog is going to slobber on you uh, it's going to do some things that uh, you know it's going to have a certain amount of dander not much but some you know it's going to have some oil on its coat not much but some it's going to pee sometimes this is another thing a lot of times like the proteins that people are allergic to as it relates to dog are in their saliva or in their pee and a little dog like this when they pee if you don't keep them super clean down here around their private parts they get a little pee on them and uh, that can cause an allergic reaction versus this dog come here buddy this dog if you have dog allergies <laughs> this is going to make them go off the charts it's going to make them explode because he's super oily he's got a double coat he slobbers everywhere and uh, he sheds i mean listen he just sheds all day i take him in and within 10 seconds my whole tile floor is just covered with uh, black lab hair okay so that's the basic difference now the only other thing I want to tell you is that there is something else to consider as it relates to uh, the, aller the hypoallergenic properties of golden doodles, especially if you're going to get out and do some puppy-sized adventures. Okay? Because over the years, oh, I've had hundreds of people that uh, would come out, and when they were growing up, they had dogs. They loved dogs and they would have to take allergy shots or they would have to take medicine all the time to treat the symptoms of their allergies as related to dogs or at least what they thought were allergies related to dogs they would get a golden doodle and 
a substantial percentage of those people, as soon as they get a golden doodle, those uh, symptoms really clear up, or at least they're, they're, they don't have them as much as they did before, okay? Substantial reduction. But some of the people see absolutely no reduction in their allergy symptoms. And so we, we used to sit around and we would think about it and talk about it, and finally we hit upon what we call now the dust mop theory. So you can have a golden doodle, and golden doodles, I, I don't know if you've touched one yet. If you haven't touched one, before you buy one, make sure you go out and you get some, you know, some hands-on time with them because their hair is very fine and everything sticks in them. Like if you get a cuckle burr in a, in a golden doodle's coat, then, I mean, it's hard to get out, right? Sometimes when we're running, running around out here, these golden doodles, they'll get caught up in a briar patch and we've got to go over there and pick each, each little limb out so they can get free. I mean, they literally get trapped like a brer rabbit or something. And so, like, as your dog is outside playing, and it could be on an adventure, you know, like the kind of adventures that we do, okay, or it could just be out in your yard, and uh, the yard's just been mowed. Well, what happens is as your dog is tromping around out there, okay, all kinds of stuff are getting into that golden doodle coat, okay? And so, what happens, look, right there, you can see, ah, I'm stuck. Now, so when your dog goes to come into the house, your hypoallergenic dog a lot of times what they're doing is they're just bringing into your house all kinds of environmental allergens, right? So let's say you weren't allergic to this dust mop. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be allergic to whatever gets on this dust mop. If you're allergic to dogs, and uh, most of the time what that means is you're allergic to proteins like in their slobber or uh, in their urine or in the oil on their skin, right? So you can take a golden doodle to the dog park and when they're licking and playing all, you know, and sometimes peeing on each other, a golden doodle coat, look at that, it just soaks up everything from the environment. It soaks up uh, liquid from the saliva, liquid from the urine, soaks up oil. And when you go out and uh, you're walking through the grass, grass gets stuck in there. So if you don't just have dog allergies, then when your golden doodle goes out, like uh, it's just, you know, you're bringing all the allergies from outside into your house with you. And that creates a certain amount of problem. Okay. So then you say, oh, Stony, well, is it hopeless? You know, I mean, because I'm allergic to grass and I'm allergic to pollen and I'm allergic to a lot of things outside. Does that mean if I get a little dog that I have to keep it away from other dogs and I have to, you know, keep it perfectly clean and I can't go on puppy sized adventures? Nope. Because remember, I told you when I had clients out here that were like having these problems, we sat down and we thought about it. And that's where we came up with the dust mop theory. Okay. Well, what we decided was the easiest thing to do. Whenever we bring the golden doodles out here and they run around like this, okay, we take a force dryer. Just look this up on Amazon or uh, your favorite search engine, just a uh, dog groomer's force dryer. And all it is an electric motor with a fan and a hose on it. And it blows air really, really hard out the end of this hose. And so every time, if you just get one of these things and you leave it by your back door, then every time that you come in from outside, you just take the force dryer and you just blow your golden doodle's coat out, you know, and I clean it up. And then now all of a sudden it's clean. And when it comes in the house, it's not bringing all the allergens from outside into the house. And that's what a force dryer is. And uh, so that's what we've decided. We've decided that golden doodles are awesome. And uh, we're glad people came up with them. We like having them here at the kennel. They're really fun to train because they have a lot of energy, but only for short periods of time. And when they go to sleep, they're dead asleep. And other than the fact that they bark a little bit and they can be a little ha bit hard to housebreak and maybe they need a little extra attention, okay? Uh, they're about perfect. They're just about perfect house dogs. When you come back in, you know, just look through their hair. Now, this is important, uh, not just for your allergies, but it's also important for the health of the dog because sometimes they'll get like a little uh, like a little piece of wood or something in their hair and it'll be matted up close to their skin and it'll cause a sore. So just kind of take your hands, go over. If it, any big stuff, pull that out by hand. And then what you do is just, now this little dog's probably gonna freak out a little bit because it's not used to being hit with a force dryer. But over the course of time, it gets to be kind of fun. There's nothing really to it. And you just blow them off. Yeah, I'm just kind of blowing her off and she's looking all fluffy. This is why dogs look so good after they get a bath at the groomer is because the groomer uses a force dryer on them. Makes them look all fluffy. Ain't that cool? 
Now what this is doing, guys, is this is blowing anything that I don't want in the coat off. So I don't have to worry about it coming off in my house. Now what you'll want to do right after you do this is make sure that you go in and clean up yourself because as you're blowing this stuff off, it gets in the air and then it gets on your clothes, you know. So there's no perfect answer in the dog world, but there's better answers. Look at that. And so, you know, like I said, there's no perfect answers, but there's definitely better answers. Look, my dog looks awesome. Most of that uh, stuff that was in her coat is out. I had to pull a few things out by hand, not many. I made sure that she doesn't have anything that's gonna cause her problem with her skin. And I blew off all the stuff that might go in and cause somebody that visits my home that has allergies uh, to have an allergy flare up. All right, so that's, the, that's what I'm talking about this week and I'll be back next week with some more fun stuff.